It's very hard to find, you yeah. know, and it's, and it's hard to get out there. But this next young man is a particular favorite of mine. He's a young comedian, very funny, and uh, he works out here at the Comedy Store and the Improvisation here in Los Angeles. And I thought I'd like to share his talent with you. So would you all please welcome George Miller. Oh, Thank you very much. Um, how are you today? You don't have to answer. I'm real dumb on audience participation. Um, I know you don't know me. I come from Seattle up in Washington. And Oh, yeah? Really? Good, good. The uh, thing I always remember about growing up in Seattle is I always felt sorry for my mom because, I don't know, she always had to work an outside job. She was putting my dad through prison. And, uh, my sister was another one in the family I felt sorry for because she was one of these people, she had this complex, see, she felt she was odd looking. And I don't know, I never thought she was that odd looking, but she was always, you know, real self-conscious about her noses. And, uh... <laughs> At one point, for a couple months, we lived with my grandparents and they were getting along in years. And I think because of their influence to this day, I still get along well with elderly people. Unless they brag about their age. You've all been victims of that. Look at me! I'm 94 years old! Well, good. That means you'll be passing away soon. <laughs> My grandparents were Pentecostal, boy. Pentecostal fire and brimstone. If you're not good, you're going to hell. And I grew up fearing that. I gotta be good. There couldn't be a worse possible fate. But my attitude changed a couple years ago because I saw that movie, The Exorcist. Remember the demon? The demon says something like, your mother does perverted acts in hell. And I thought, well, maybe it's bad, but apparently they do have a recreation period. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> my mom was always my favorite relative. I always liked my mom, but uh, parents, they can say things that will make you feel insecure without meaning to, huh? Like, classic example is on my 20th birthday, instead of saying, happy birthday, George, and all that, my mom had to bring out the fact that Charles Percy, the senator from Illinois, when he was 20, he was the head of Bell and Howell Corporation. Can you see that? A 20-year-old kid? Yeah, we'll have a stockholders meeting at 10 o'clock. I'm flying to the coast at noon. I'll be meeting with the president of General Motors at 5 p.m. When I was 20, I was working at McDonald's. Uh, you want lids on these? <laughs> You know what my mom would do? She would always tell you stuff that you would know to do anyway. She would have to give you an order even though you were going to do it naturally. We're in the supermarket. And I say, well, I think I'll go back and I'll get a half a gallon of milk. Well, be sure to pick out a carton that has the latest date stamped on it. <laughs> Gee, Mom, I was going to get one that says, about to sour. <laughs> And she would always say stuff that nobody else in the world would say, like she was visiting in California during the 71 earthquake, and I had taken a sleeping pill. I slept right through it, okay? So over five years ago, to this day, she's never let me live it down. I did everything I could to wake you up that day. <laughs> I yelled at you, I screamed at you, nothing I could do would wake you up. And then she says something I still can't believe. She says, you spoil the whole earthquake for me. <laughs> And one time we were watching that program, The Wild, Wild World of Animals. You ever see that show? And at the end, they roll the credits. This is true. It says, Photography Wolfgang Bayer. That's the guy's name. Right underneath it says, Field Supervision Wolfgang Bayer. And my mom says, I wonder if it's the same Wolfgang Bayer. <laughs> Countdown to senility. <laughs> and she would always give lectures. Even if she didn't know a person, she would feel free to give the old lecture. Like one time we're on a bus and there's a kid about nine or ten years old. He's got his arm dangling out the window, you know, like kids do. My mom didn't know him, but she had to give a lecture. Young man, that's a good way to lose an arm. And the kid was sarcastic. He said, thank you. Could you tell us some of the other ways? <laughs> I've always had problems with women. I don't care if it was my mom or teachers or lady friends. Uh, women will drive you up the wall sometimes. I went with the same girl three and a half years. Swear to God, it never failed. 
three and one half years, every time I took her out to a restaurant, she would always pull the same old trick. Well, I want to eat too. Boy, I just hate that. <laughs> talking to you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Ah, George, you don't Hi, sound like Freddy. you had a typical family, man. No, I didn't. I had I was other relatives I didn't get a chance to tell you about because he gave me the one-minute signal. I didn't give it to you. Yeah, he, he gave it to me, right. I didn't get a chance to tell you. I had a brother. Well, I still have a brother. He didn't die. Um, <laughs> wait a minute, I'll tell you about this. He's an inept doctor. He cheated his way through medical school. And uh, you might have read about him in a paper a couple of years ago. He's called the scene of a shooting, and he was really dramatic. He said, uh, that bullet has got to come out immediately, which is really stupid. It was lodged in the couch. <laughs> Do I look at you or there? No, you look, <laughs> wherever, wherever. look at me, force okay. yourself. How long have you been a comedian? Well... I've been doing it ever since I got out of high school, but it's really seriously for about three years at the uh, comedy store working out there. Yeah. And once in a while at the improv. Yeah. And uh, I don't know. You did it in high school, though? Because that, that's well, what I learned. I learned the bathroom in high school. I was doing jokes. <laughs> in and I'm still working some toilets. It's gonna... <laughs> I don't believe that. <laughs> When, but when did you seriously well, decide to pursue it as like... In high school, we had a course we could take instead of English for one semester. You could get out of English if you took what they called lab writing. And any time I wrote anything, it would generally be funny, but we didn't uh, read our own stuff. We'd have somebody else read it. So on the times that it wasn't funny, I could kind of say, well, the guy had no delivery or something like that. Say. So that was really where I got the idea that maybe I could do something with comedy. Yeah. And uh, high school was always miserable for me anyway. I guess... Comedy was like a defense mechanism, right? Yeah. And like, one thing I was overweight, one thing I had acne. Uh, I was in Believe It or Not, I even had pimples on my watch. <laughs> when, when do you think, now, is it just recently that you said, this is what I want to do? Because I know from when I started acting and doing comedy, I said, this is what I want to do. Was it, did you start out wanting it? Or is it just recently you say, hey, this is what I want to do in my life? Well. It was after high school, but there was no place to do it until uh, I came down here. I worked in Seattle for a little bit, maybe a couple weeks out of the year for like six, seven years. But that mm -hmm. added up to maybe like, what, four or five months. Yeah. And so that gave me kind of a foundation when I got to, to L.A., and then there were more places. Yeah. And the last three years, I've been hitting it you know, pretty hard four or five times a week. Yeah. And uh, so really, you could say all told, maybe three, four years. I think it's going to be dynamite. Oh, I hope so. And that was great. Congratulations. Okay. George Thank Miller, ladies and gentlemen.